HIV, like all viruses, lacks the ability to reproduce on its own. In order to replicate, HIV must target and infect a host cell, such as the CD4 positive human T cell. HIV is composed of a viral core containing two identical strands of RNA associated with the enzyme reverse transcriptase and other core proteins. Surrounding the core is a viral membrane containing multiple viral glycoprotein complexes, often called spikes. Each spike is a trimer of a viral glycoprotein complex composed of a transmembrane glycoprotein, GP41, and a large surface glycoprotein, GP120. The current model of HIV fusion and cell entry requires the participation of CD4 and chemokine co-receptors situated on the surface of the cell membrane. Step 1 is termed attachment and proceeds with the binding of GP120 to the CD4 receptor. This binding process is thought to induce a conformational change in the structure of GP120. Step 2 involves the interaction of the GP120 CD4 complex with the chemokine co-receptor. The action of co-receptor binding is thought to result in further conformational changes in GP120. These changes allow GP120 to move aside, exposing GP41. The third and final step preceding HIV cell entry is called fusion and is mediated by GP41. GP41 contains two heptad repeat domains, HR2 and HR1. Current models suggest that as GP41 is released from GP120, the hydrophobic terminus of GP41 embeds itself in the cell membrane. Subsequently, the loosely structured HR2 domain begins to coil into the grooves exposed on the trimeric HR1 domain of GP41. This process has been termed HR2 zipping and acts to pull the viral and cell membranes into close proximity. In theory, this acts to destabilize the membranes, in effect punching a hole called a fusion pore in the viral and cell membranes. Ultimately, the fusion pore grows large enough to allow the HIV capsid to pass through the cell membrane and into the cytoplasm.